Welcome back everybody. This is Professor Cameron from the Wentworth Institute of Technology and we're going to be continuing our series on this pulley assembly. Now last video we went ahead and modeled this pulley wheel. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on this bracket and we're going to be working on the base that everything sits on. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this bracket. Now in this assembly, you'll notice we have two brackets. However, when we model this, we're only gonna model one of these brackets. And then when we build our assembly, we're just gonna insert it into our assembly twice. Now, when we look at this bracket, uh, at first glance, it may look like there's a lot going on. This is actually pretty simple once we go ahead and break this down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start this like we start all of our other parts. We're going to go ahead to File, New, and New Part. Once we have our new part file, we're going to do like we always do and set our units to millimeters. Now what we're going to do on this first is we're going to model this sort of uh, base pad of this bracket. So on our top plan, we're going to go ahead and create a new sketch. From here, we can grab our center rectangle tool and go ahead and draw out a rectangle. And we're going to dimension this to 40 tall by 100 long. And we're going to go ahead and extrude this to a height of 10 millimeters. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and model this upright portion. Now to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch on this surface of our rectangle. Now since we drew our rectangle around the origin, our origin on this plane is at the middle. That's going to be a benefit to us. What we're going to do is we're going to come up to our line tool and grab a center line. You'll see how we use this in just a second. But we're going to start at the origin and then just draw this straight up. At the top of the center line, we're going to go ahead and draw a circle. We're going to grab our line tool. Starting at this left hand corner, draw it up to our circle. Now you'll notice when we do this, we have four, for lack of a better word, corner nodes on this circle. We do not want to draw our line to those nodes. What we want to do is go just slightly above it. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, don't click onto that corner node. We're going to go slightly above it. And then we're going to draw a line to connect this, these two at the bottom. So now we have the base shape of this. What we can do is go ahead and smart dimension this. I'm going to grab smart dimension and we're first going to start with the diameter of this circle. And we're going to set that to a diameter of 40. The next thing we're going to do is dimension from the center of the circle to the bottom of our rectangle base. So right down here. And we're going to set this to a height of 60 millimeters.
Now to fully define these lines here that we drew on, we're not going to use a smart dimension. What we're going to do is we're going to add a relation. And what we want is for this line to be tangent to this circle. To do that, we're going to press and hold our control key. We're going to click on the line and then we're going to click on the circle. And on our left hand side over here, you'll see the add relation tangent. We're going to go ahead and select that. And then all we're going to do is that same treatment on the right hand side. We're going to press and hold control, click the line and the circle and then tangent. And that should fully define that sketch for you. Now, once we have this again, another 2d drawing, we're going to go to our extrude boss base tool and we're going to run into a little bit of an issue here because we have multiple contours. SOLIDWORKS does not know which contour we necessarily want to extrude. However, you'll notice as I move my cursor over this sketch, the different contours will light up red. All we're going to do here is select the different contours we want to extrude. You may also notice that my extrusion is jutting out in the wrong direction. To flip this, next to where it says blind, we have an arrow. We're going to reverse that direction. We're going to click that arrow. And then we're going to go ahead and extrude this to 10 millimeters. And we can click OK. Now, once we've got that drawn, we're going to add the cylinder that juts out the front of this. We're going to create another sketch on this surface. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our circle tool. And before we draw on this face, we're going to hover our cursor on the outside edge of this top arc. And do you notice how this center point pops up? We're going to put our cursor here right on that center point and draw out our circle. What that's doing is it's tying our circle onto the center point of that first arc that we made. All we have to do now is smart dimension this to a diameter of 40 and it's fully defined. We can go ahead and extrude this by five millimeters. We're going to cut the circle through this in exactly the same fashion. We're going to create a sketch on this outside face. We're going to grab our circle tool, hover over the outside arc, click on that center point and draw out a circle. We're then going to smart dimension this to a diameter of 16. As we remember from our previous videos, to cut this feature out, we're going to use the extrude cut tool and we're going to use the through all command. Now on our finish bracket, you'll notice our corners are rounded over and we have these mounting holes. We'll go ahead and cut the holes on our piece. What we're going to do is we're going to select the surface and create a new sketch on it. And we're just going to draw two circles. We're going to smart dimension the diameter of both of them to 10 millimeters. And to dimension the location, what we're going to do is we're going to place a dimension from this line right here 
to the center point of our circle. And we're going to set that to 15 for both of these. And then what we're going to do is dimension from the left and right hand sides respectively to the center of the circle. And we're going to set those to 20. Once we've done that, our sketches are fully defined. And we can go ahead and use our extrude cut tool to cut those out. Now to round over these corners, as you recall from our first tutorial, we're going to use our fillet tool located under our features tab. We're going to set our fillet radius to 15. And we're just going to select those two edges that we want to round over. Once we've done that, this part is complete. All we have left to do is to set our material. And again, this part is going to be alloy steel. Once you've got that part modeled, you can go ahead and save this piece. Now, if we were able to model that, our base is going to be even simpler to model. What we're going to do is just like we did last time, we're going to create a new part file. And like always, we're going to set our units to millimeters. We're going to go ahead and create a sketch on our top plane. We're going to grab our center rectangle tool and draw out a box. And we're going to dimension this to 100 millimeters by 146. Now we can extrude this and then cut the holes in it afterwards. Or we can draw the holes in right now and extrude it without those holes in place. So it'll just save us a step. So what we can do is we can grab our circle tool and we can draw four holes. One thing you do not want to do is draw your holes on these angled lines here. That will give you issues dimensioning this later. So just draw it somewhere in space. Now all we're going to do here is follow that same dimensioning scheme that we did for the holes on the bracket. We're going to set the diameters of all of these to 10. From this right hand side to the center of the hole, we're going to set that to 15. And likewise on the left hand side. And then from the tops and the bottoms to the center of the hole, we're going to set that to 20.
So when we're done, we should have a sketch that looks like the following. What we're going to do is go ahead and extrude this to a height of 10 millimeters. And then just like we did with the bracket, we're going to use our fillet tool with a radius of 15 to round the corners. Again, we're going to set our material to alloy steel. And we can go ahead and save this part as well. If you guys have any questions on these parts, feel free to reach out to me. We're going to continue this in the next video. And have a nice day.